whenever I, I think about KubeCon, um, I kind of have this, uh, this, this sense of that I'm playing buzzword bingo in a massively large bingo card that is incredibly hard to fathom and figure out where to do anything. So um, I thought that I would, um, rather than try and play this game, I may play this game during uh, KubeCon um, by myself and send out some sheets here, because I did find a great website for doing this. Um, so I'm, yeah, buzzword bingo call sheets, print them, boom, we're in there. But um, so I kind of wanted to start off though, um, rather than diving into what your favorite session is, is to make everybody do something fun. Because the fun part of these conferences is, besides the hallway conferences and seeing Chris and Jen and Josh in person, is um, swag. And I, what I loved about the definition of swag here is uh, one of the de definition was money or goods taken by a thief or a burglar. And I, <laughs> I'm like, that is so describes the mad <laughs> dash at every conference I've ever been to. So, um, And that's the informal I, definition, no less, the, which is yeah, weird. <laughs> yeah, if you've ever uh, staffed a booth um, uh, or at Red Hat or any other vendor booth or anything else, like even in the open source section where they have stickers galore, it is crazy. Um, the people who come through with the bags and just all their stuff in there. So I'm going to give everybody a few minutes here who's on here, Chris and Jen, and um, I'll stop sharing the screen for a minute and make you go off and find your favorite piece of swag. And if you're watching, following along here somewhere, please um, share in the chat what your favorite swag is. And while they're doing that, I am going to unpack the swag I got from uh, KubeCon for being a speaker this time around. I don't know if you can see this, but um, I thought the best part of it, I, I, I'm gonna, was because it's virtual, they gave us slippers from home, okay? Nice. So, yeah, not that I didn't already score a million of these from that. And I am not even gonna tell you what this is. I think this is, remains to be guessed. But um, that just so that nobody thinks it's some sort of strange, um, you know, what, it is cat a, toy. No, it, well, it, <laughs> it is a supposed to be a back thumper. Um, so uh, yeah, so there, there it is. Um, yep, that's not what I thought it was. And um, let's got see. one of those. It's called a theracane. <laughs> strange little slinky like toy, but a bag that's totally reusable for other swag. So yes, yeah, slinky toy. And let's see, you guys are all, I hope you're all gathering your stuff. And um, there was another thing in here. Oh, I don't know, I might've already put it away. Oh, this was the best, there was a little pin, speaker's pin, which has already been absconded with by um, some teenager who came over the other day. Um, <laughs> but this, this is handy, all right? This is like, did you get when you go to the, the, the hotel? Oh, it's like, nice. Because I have yeah. thought at my house many a time of putting up one of those on the air, off the air yeah. uh, lights on the outside so that when I'm doing a talk like this one with y'all, um, I, uh, I don't get uh, interrupted by UPS or the garbage man or anybody else. So I was thinking that would be an a interesting thing to do. So, um, so it's, uh, it's funny you mentioned that. I actually have on air lighting for my like house and family notification thing. Yeah. So I have two Amazon buttons that do that for me so that wow. there's, yeah, Ooh. few lights, push a button, turns a red light on down here and turns the stairwell down to yeah. the office. Red. I, I just madly wave whoever is in the background away. Yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm not that good. I'm not that good. <laughs> like I have like it, the visual cue for a five year old is way better than like daddy's working, daddy's working, daddy's working, right? Like the visual of, oh, daddy is on the air. <laughs> yeah, that's it's good. very, very much, uh, so Jen, very Jen, what, do you, what, have you, what have you got for swag that's nearby? I, I realize that my kid has all the cool swag, but I did find this guy. So this is from OpenStack Summit, I think, uh, from Sydney, Australia, which was three years ago. And I think this was at the... Um, I'm guessing, well, it's one of the Chinese vendors. I can't read what, what it is, but anyway, this was a, this was the closest thing I could 
fine, but I have a collection of really cool swag pins. I realized my son has them all in his backpack. Yeah, that, that's what happens nice. with the pins. It's a good so, one. My but, best and then, yeah. What's the, what's the, um, what's your uh, favorite one that you've ever gotten? Uh, in terms of swag pins? Or I mean, I think my swag anywhere. That's hard. I get, you know, I like the swag pins because you can, you know, display those easily. I mean, I like the one that I actually, I myself produced it for Red Hat Summit. Oh, actually, yeah, I love the ducks. And actually, I love the RDO ducks. Yes. I have an entire <laughs> collection of RDO ducks. Mm -hmm. um, those are up in the bathtub where, because my son actually uses, I shouldn't tell him because he's 11. He's going to be humiliated. I just revealed that. <laughs> um, because I've been collecting these RDO wedding. ducks. <laughs> he's been collecting those RDO. I've been collecting them for years. So he's got this really extensive collection. And he still likes to play with them, and he's in middle school. Oh my gosh, I can't believe he's done that. <laughs> he's not around. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't get it to us. So, um, Josh, what's what's your favorite uh, swag, and what did you find nearby? Well, a couple of things. I, I mean, the um, the nearest by thing is these little flashlight metal cubicle flashlights we had made for the release of metal cubed um one of the pieces of swag that we actually had produced that i kept one of because it's really useful for looking for things under my desk um best piece of speaker swag i ever got is this thing from GopherCon. yes the so one of ashley's little gophers in a race car the really awesome little stuffed animal i had to buy three um, because <laughs> yeah <the> show <laughs> One for me to play yeah. with and one for Max yep. to play with. Yeah. Yeah. But but the one I probably use the most is one that I got last KubeCon for being an ambassador. And it's uh, this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. yeah. That one's yeah. Good. That's a good one. That's a good one. So, yeah. Stolen too. Everything gets stolen. All the good stuff gets stolen at my house. I have a box that I put it all in when I come back and whenever – I do my maker stuff. The kids just go through that and take whatever stickers they want. So, um, yeah. That's nice. It. So, uh, what is the strangest thing that you've ever Yeah, and I don't, I didn't have time to dig through my, because like anything I don't actually want goes in boxes to give out at the meetup, um, mm -hmm. which I have quite a bit of since we haven't been able to have a meetup in person for a while. Um, and I didn't have time to dig through. I was trying to think, um, Oracle has been giving out these little dancing robots for a while. Mm. And um, like at every conference. And what's really amusing about them is that they fall over. <laughs> which seems like, like a, a bad ball? message. Yeah. <laughs> it is a, it, I think it's an appropriate message, but I'm just going to say that. Anyway. Yeah. Um, saying things I shouldn't be saying. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, what are you guys saying with this anyway? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, works well, for just long enough. <laughs> I was I was telling telling everybody before we we went on the air what my favorite or m the strangest swag I ever got was, and I have to do the the clean version of it. Um, mm. I was at an OpenStack summit years ago. I'm pretty sure it was in Boston, and I can't remember the vendor's name, but I got a pair of black boxer sh shorts with maximum uptime printed on them. Uh, yeah. Terrifically inappropriate. Yes. Totally inappropriate. But I, I <laughs> trust me, I kept them for a long, long time. But some um, some partner of mine um, disappeared them at some point. So uh, she's probably, uh, hopefully, they've got them somewhere. But uh, I think Justin's run out of the room now that I've said maybe he has a pair of them somewhere. <laughs> oh, um, no. uh, maybe, oh, I, I would love to remember who that was because I just. First of all, it's completely inappropriate, but it was hilarious, and it was the hottest hotcake uh, um, thing swag at the event. But I'm sure, like now with all the DNI, that's that had to have been yeah, six years, years ago. ago. Yeah, six years that ago. had to be a while ago. Yeah, something, something close to that. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. What's the strangest thing you've ever gotten, Jen? I'm just trying to debate whether I've seen some strange swag that I haven't taken. I think. Uh, I remember there was like a, uh, I'm trying to remember there was this, this storage shirt that someone was producing and it had something kind of inappropriate related to size on it and protection. Um, there was also this piece of slide that became very notorious and it was with, um, I would to say prophylactics involved. <laughs> um, oh, that, that, okay. that's probably one of the most notorious ones. Um, 
I've seen, but I, you know, I don't have, I didn't take that as a souvenir, but that, that, that's been called out. Um, so, so nothing that I nothing. took and owned because I went, that's just kind of skeezy. <laughs> um, but, you know. <laughs> I, I kind of think now in the virtual world that um, one of the hardest things is to, to deliver swag, right? So, you know, trying to get a t-shirt across an international border, I think oh. A fiasco with OKD, where based after all the shipping and everything, it was like seventy bucks to send a T-shirt to, yeah. you know, Walid and there, and we just yeah. said no. we said we'll send you. Something. Well, and there's some there's some places we can't send T-shirts to at all right now. At all, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and that that kind of and and knowingly that changes every like other week. <laughs> mm-hmm. True. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm yeah. going to share my screen again, and um talk a little bit about the schedules. So that's the swag dash. I figured that was be a, a fine thing to do. So if we go to um, here, I have redhat.com. We have a bunch of sites here that make it really super easy if you're trying to find Red Hat things. Um, so I thought I would um, share that if you wanted to, um, let me see, if you present mode here. So I get a big thing there so you can QR code that. And Veronica Cooley and Jen and the whole team have done a wonderful job making this happen. And um, so there's that. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say give a shout out to on day zero. This is going to be a long week. Okay. This is Tuesday. All right. And I don't know about the rest of you, but there's KubeCon and there's I'm talking at one other conference on Thursday, some Canadian academic master class on cloud computing. And on Monday, the whole week is Lesbians Who's Tech Week. So they kind of collide, my two favorite conferences. So I will be on like multiple terminals all week. So, but day zero, which is Tuesday, um, I will be at the OpenShift Commons gathering, hosting and moderating that. And my good friend, Chris uh, Short here is going to be doing a variation on that called, um, I don't know, did we officially call it Mystery Science Theater does uh, OpenShift Commons live streaming it in the background and running commentary, hopefully not on my hairstyles. No, no, we definitely intend for it to be very uh, cordial and polite, unlike some of the Mystery Science Theater 3000 of old, right? Like it might have mm -hmm. been cutting or kind of, you know, yeah, dabbing so. at the uh, the bad production potentially. But this will be a enlightening Mystery Science Theater kind of event. Ah. So, um, so that's that's kind of the, the big thing for me on, on Tuesday, um, the last day I'm going to be hosting the OKD working group meeting too. But what I thought um, I would make everybody do is um, kind of show us your schedule. And by what I mean by that is if you, um, I see if I have mine up here correctly. I'm trying to use, I'm trying to be better about this. Because um, uh, if you try and manage your way through this whole um, thing that is here. Let's see if you can go to, I can go to my schedule and pick out, I have a few friends. That's nice to know people who are my friends. That's interesting. I never noticed that part of it before. So there's the OpenShift Commons gathering um, and there's a whole tons of things that, you know, that I want to go to um, some that I have to go to. Um, I am given a keynote on um, that. I'm like five minutes of the fastest talking I've ever done on Wednesday. Um, so, but what I really highly encourage people to do is um, especially if it's a project they're they're interested in, don't know a lot about is to go to the meet the maintainer sessions. Uh, those are great. Um, I'm definitely, um, I've got a kind of sporadic group of things in here at different times, but um, I think there's what I try and tend to do is go to um, as many of the end user talks as I could find. And I was a little surprised um, at how few um, end user case studies there were um, on the menu. And so that was kind of, uh, kind of, kind of interesting is a lot more um, technical focus. And there's a few, I'm going to go there. This one I thought was really cool. Um, the high schoolers guide. Um, we always have somebody there who makes you feel like you should be a grandparent now. Um, and this one, uh, this guy has been doing a lot of work um, around Kubernetes. I, so I'm definitely going to tune in and, and see what he's doing here. But there's a ton of stuff here. So um, what I thought uh, I would do is I'll go back and to my slides here because I'm going to make, uh, make Josh go first. And this was the couple of slides that he was talking about. So, Josh. Yeah, so 
I'm going to be spending a lot of my conference time off campus um, because, um, um, among other things, Chris and I are going to be running these office hours sessions. Um, so one of the things that the main KubeCon program doesn't really permit you to do is have sessions that have high interactivity with the project maintainer. Um, and it's just because of the platform required to do video broadcast to so many people. So we thought we would hold a few sessions where we would bring project maintainers for projects that Red Hat sponsors um, and or, you know, other experts and have them there to answer your questions. Um, and so you can get to this from the Red Hat landing page. You can get to this. These are all going to be in OpenShift TV. So this is also on the OpenShift TV schedule, um, all of mm -hmm. these sessions. You know, we're going to start with um, members of the Knative team talking about answering your questions on serverless applications, followed by members of the SAF team answering your questions about Rook. Um, I, and then the Kubert folks are going to talk about using Kubernetes to run your VMs. and Actually, that particular session, because this is what they're looking at, they're going to spend a lot of time talking about and answering your questions about getting to Kubevert 1.0, um, uh, which is where the project is right now. Mm -hmm. um, Red Hat Agile team is going to be talking about implementing GitOps. So if GitOps is something that you have heard of, but you don't really know what it is, or you know what it is, but you don't know how it relates to your actual production environment at work, um, then that would be a great session to come to. You can ask questions about it. Um, because we get a lot of questions about certifications at these conferences, the Red Hat certifications team is going to be holding a Q&A. Um, so if you're interested in getting your OpenShift certification or even your RHEL certification um, and you had questions, that's the place to come. And then going to wind up with our developer advocates talking about the and answering questions about the features in 4.6. So if any interest you, Please come and please bring your questions. I mean, these, these are here. We're doing these specifically off the KubeCon platform so that we can spend time directly answering your questions. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things is to have that sort of interactivity, too. There'll be chat rooms and the booth and all kinds of other fun stuff um, inside of the platform that they're using. I think it's Intrato again. Um, but to, it, what's been really difficult is fig finding great ways to host um, workshops and hand it on and really have some high interactivity. So this, I think, will be a, a great opportunity for, for, for folks if you're interested in these topics. So that's that. Um, oh, yeah, and, and speaking of swag from earlier, by the way, if you do bring a question to one of these sessions and you ask your question um, and we answer it on air, then we will also send you a T-shirt. Assuming that you live in a country we can send T-shirts to. Right. There, there being a couple of exceptions. <laughs> yeah. Um, the... Um, but but for, for anybody else, we will mail you a T-shirt. Cool. So what's on this nice slide? Uh, so this is just, this is a list of um, a bunch of the sessions that are being led by Red Hatters. Whole another page of ones that are maintainer sessions. I actually realized that a couple of, one, uh, no, 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 they're not missing. Okay. These are, there's two different programs of KubeCon, right? There's the regular sessions mm -hmm. and there's the maintainer sessions. So the regular sessions are the ones that go through the normal submission process and are chosen for being appropriate presentations and everything. And those are the maintainer sessions, and basically every Kubernetes SIG, every CNCF project, every CNCF SIG is entitled to one of those, and they put together a presentation about something that they have going on right then. Mm -hmm. And because Red Hatters are involved in so many of those groups, they're involved in so many of those presentations. I don't have that, the maintainer session list. Just kind of assume that if you go to maintainer session, there's probably going to be a Red Hatter on the panel. Um, yeah. the, um, but we actually have a lot of cool stuff. So in the stuff we're presenting, we ended up with a lot of sort of day two stuff um, for this KubeCon. Mm -hmm. um, and fun stuff, too. Like um, uh, the one that starts off there is Jeffrey Sika. Um, and at least one of his collaborators are going to do Honk CTL or Honk Cuddle again. Mm -hmm. um, this is a live hack Kubernetes uh, contest. Um, you know, so if you're into it, you download a kind image and then you try to meet a challenge that requires hacking Kubernetes through it. Um, the, um, the name Honk Cuddle comes from the Untitled Goose Game. 
Um, and then we have a lot of day two things like um, Ryan talking about admission control, um, the Rooksef folks talking about how storage can fail, um, uh, the um, our performance the the performance group um, for Kubernetes, actually our performance group um, within Red Hat talking about um, scale and you know how they test scale and performance. Um, on an ongoing basis. So a lot of really useful, like for, for a lot of, for any people here who have already adopted Kubernetes in their environment or adopted other cloud native technologies in their environment, um, have them in dev, have them in test, are looking at moving to production. There's going to be a lot of great content. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it's, it's packed. So I, I know we're leaning, uh, these are, we're talking about the Red Hat stuff. So I just want to quickly jump over and just show you that all of this, I believe, is set up real a lot of it um, should yeah. all be here on this um, Red Hat page and um, so if you just Google that there's a, oh yeah quick go past that um, <laughs> all of these things yeah I have avoided doing a, a keynote at, at KubeCon successfully until this year because I had no excuse because um, it was virtual and I couldn't say anything about it so hey um, this is but there's a ton of them there's also um, maybe Jen, you want to talk about um, finding the raffle and doing the booth? Yeah, so we're going to be promoting this landing page, which of course has a list of all the information about the Red Hat presence at KubeCon uh, next week. And so I just have to make clear that if you're a hatter or you work for the government, unfortunately, you're not eligible to enter this raffle. Um, but we do have uh, a bunch of Amazon gift cards we're going to be uh, handing out. So all you got to do is go on this landing page and fill out your information. And then you're uh, entered to win a $300 Amazon gift card. If you go to the Red Hat booth within um, the platform itself, uh, we will be giving out Red Hat swag. Uh, and the swag that we're going to be giving out is a cool Red Hat. Cool. So, so, so be sure to do the landing page to be eligible for the Amazon gift card and then come to the booth itself within um, the platform for KubeCon, and then you'll be eligible to win a, it's, and it's a really nice scarf. Um, and we've got um, a bunch to give out. So if you'll drive by both those places, you'll get some pretty cool things. Yeah, so um, there, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'll throw the link to that landing page in the chat and we can surface that through the rest of the universe here. Um, yep. I think that's the right page or that gets you to the arcade at least. So I, I think that's, you know, I think that's the really, um, going to be the interesting navigation thing through the UI of the platform, trying to find the booth and all of that. So, uh, Chris, what did what are you besides the office hours that you are hosting with Josh? What what are you going to be um, looking at? So, like, I always go and watch my friends talk, right? And I like to cheerlead my friends. I'm sorry, y'all are going to deal with that, right? Like, cheerleading virtually is a lot harder um, than sitting in the front row and kind of just being there, being that calming presence for my buddies. Um, so like, I will go to a lot of talks from my friends at Apple that have gone over there recently. Um, definitely my friends at CNCF, um, people like Steven Augustus, if he's doing a talk, but Chiefy, right? Like he lives in Michigan, George Castro lives in Michigan, Bob, uh, Bob Killen lives in Michigan. And then, um, like those talks I'll go to, but then Caslin Fields is part of the upstream marketing team. And that's the team that I'm working with right now in the Kubernetes community uh, extensively. And they're doing a talk about like how we have all these tools to help you get the word out about your projects, but there's like, we need to get the word out about it. So they actually got accepted to do a KubeCon talk to talk about the marketing upstream team. And that's, that's very, very cool. So I'll definitely be tuning in for that. So how, how about you, Jen? Do you have a, a bunch that you, you're going to try and get to? I know, did you, are you on the menu this time? Or did you get a talk in? Because I know you Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't, I didn't um, submit a talk for this one. But um, I'm going to be bebopping all over the place. I mean, I actually haven't filled out my sked because I'm procrastinating. Of course, I'm going to check out your super awesome keynote. Woo! Yeah. Um, and I do like the end user stories, and I'm going to look at the hatters. Um, you know, I'm going to try to get to everybody's session, even if I have to go after the fact and check out the recordings. But there's always super cool content that I love um, to attend at KubeCon. 
and then I'm going to try to check out some office hours. So I don't know, like I'm a procrastinator. Maybe I shouldn't say that because yeah. I'm an event planner, but I procrastinate. Um, but we've got some really, really cool stuff. And I always love checking out the community talks, right? Like, you know, my my loves for the upstream. So I enjoy kind of seeing what's going on um, in those projects. So I'll definitely probably check out a bunch of those talks. Yeah, I, th I think this this one of the things that's amazing about this is I, I kind of feel like if I don't know, if I see some a, a project, a maintainer project that I don't know anything about, I'm more likely to go to that. Like, um, what is it, Chub Chub OS or whatever, or Chub FS or you know, they, like there's these new things popping up um, all the time. And if and for the most part, it's the incubated and graduated ones that got named sessions. But mm. um, on Monday there were 38 things in the sandbox. And then on Tuesday, I got an email and we, um, I had to add, I, think I have a Trello board that I track everything CNCF that I'm involved in or that I should be paying attention to. And I think I added six more um, project, sandbox projects. And um, I don't think all of them, like all, third, what are the 42 or 43 there are now, um, have any called out slots. But I look for the people who are leading those in some of the like the SIG talks and um, other places to try and you know just catch up because it's just this fire hose of information that we have to wrap our heads around and stuff. And I don't know, Justin, I can see your face on the screen here. Did you have anything that you were you were interested in um, going to, or are you speaking at KubeCon this time? I think that's just heck no. <laughs> I'm going to listen to you all. No, no, I, I'm just uh, on because I signed up for the um, booth babe duty for, for the chat room. All right. On oh, Commons, open Commons, Commons, all right, yeah. yeah. Commons is going to be an interesting animal this year because um, yeah. KubeCon is, um, there's just so many, we're, we're doing, um, the Rosa launch that uh, OpenShift on Amazon serverless uh, 1.1 uh, launch announcement. We have some great talks. Um, Stephanie Chiris, whom um, Chris uh, interviewed a while back uh, on OpenShift TV, um, is going to do our opening talk. We coerced Matt Hicks to give us um, 10 minutes of his time. And um, the 4.6 and beyond talk um, with live Q&A with uh, folks like Clayton Coleman, and um, Derek Carr and Mike Barrett and Annette Cluett and Paul Mori and Reese Oxham will be there. And theoretically, um, even though a lot of the talks um, are pre-recorded, all of the speakers have um, asked, uh, been asked and are, are willing to um, be there for the, the interactive chat bits. So um, that you might not see their faces or voices, but they're all there to answer your questions during the talk. So. It's really an interesting thing trying to figure out how to how to make things engaging in this virtual world. And I was wondering if each of you had like a little thoughts about what what you like to see in conferences, like how you like to connect with people and different things. What's the best thing you've seen in a conference lately for connecting? Chris, can you think of anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, there's always that common interest, right? And you have to figure out like who are those people that are there with a the common interest of you at the same time right and it, it's harder now in the virtual landscape right but i think i think tncf is doing the slack channels again right so that kind of makes it a little bit easier to kind of figure out like okay these people have similar technical interests yeah. um but like my technical interests are so like wide and like not very deep um so like i like to network with as many people as possible and that it's kind That's of easier on the virtual side, but uh, yeah. I mean, you've got a volume of people there that you can like ping and talk to and like you can walk into a chat room and be like, hey, I'm super interested in this and people will chime in, but they have to be there to chime in. And that's kind of the hard part, right? Like, are you going to pass somebody in the hall wearing your, you know, Thanos shirt and be like, hey, I work on Thanos, you know, or something like that. And you're not going to get that. Whereas in the past, it'd be very obvious, hey, I work on that project, you know, and you would talk and meet somebody randomly in the hallway. So trying to regenerate that experience, right? Like, uh, I think last KubeCon, I did a lot of posting on Twitter kind of like early in the morning to kind of 
preface kind of like how my day was going and or going to go and what I would be doing. So I'll be doing a lot of that again so that I can like hopefully get people to the right place at the right time kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's it. How about you, Josh? What's your best tip for connecting with people? Like for turning on yeah, your... Yeah, yeah, I need, I need, well, first, first best tip is turn on your mic. That's the, one. Um, <laughs> um, and I would say, you know, make use of, of session chat where it's available because the advantage of session chat is obviously you have something in common already with everybody else in the audience, right? Because you, you're interested in the session. And... Um, you know, to the extent that various people involved with KuCon are offering sessions or extra activities that that offer more interactivity than the sort of main program sessions do, um, take advantage of those because interactivity means not just interactivity with the speaker, but also interactivity possibly with the other attendees. Um, I think there's another security competition that's team-based somebody is running. Um, yeah, and so obviously that would be a good way to, to sort of connect with people. Um, the other thing is, I believe, Jennifer, they confirmed that, that they'll be using CNCF Slack for the conference? Yes. So, yeah, we will yeah, have a so, Slack channel again for the conference. Yeah, that yeah works so the, the yeah. conference channels will be on CNCF Slack, but CNCF Slack is actually available year-round. Right. So if you have a connection there, if you have a private chat with somebody there, you can maintain that after the conference, follow up with people after the conference, et cetera. Um, so, uh, you know, Ian, you know, if you look beyond the conference channels, there's a whole bunch of channels there for all the CNCF SIGs and a bunch of the CNCF projects and that sort of thing. Um, and so it's a good way to connect with people that continues after the conference is over. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing that that I'm noticing is like I'm pretty sure this um, KubeCon and and OpenShift Commons are both inside of the Intrado platform, um, which is you know you have to register and log in and be there and you're there for the day. But then afterwards, it it you know rarely I don't think any of the chats available or anything like that. It all gets turned off and that you you lose that. You can watch the you know the the talks again and repeat that, but. Um, both uh, OpenShift Commons and I'm pretty sure all of the CNCF stuff is going to get uploaded to YouTube afterwards as well. So the morning after um, uh, OpenShift Commons, uh, hopefully everything will work out well and um, I'll sync up everything. But then um, I'll make all of the content available on YouTube for people to share and from all the talks. And I think I have 15 talks um, in one six hour day. So there's there's a lot of binge watching that could go on afterwards. So like if you miss something, look for it in YouTube afterwards um, or the night before um, a talk, um, look for the old ones is what I tend to do is to, to see if I've seen it before. So um, yeah, there's a lot of um, good content up on, on YouTube, both on RH OpenShift, our channel, and on the CNCF channel as well. So Jen, what's your tip for connecting online virtually? Any? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would concur with Josh to do the session chat. I, I find that the session chats are probably among the most interactive places I've seen, to be honest. And I mean, the upside of the session chats is a lot of speakers are watching themselves. For reference. So you can actually ask questions of the speakers as they're yeah. watching their awkward subs present. But um, <laughs> I, I find that that interactivity is probably highest there. I, and, you know, and I'll just say that it's just really hard to replicate the kind of serendipity that you have with like, you know, when Chris was referring to going down the hall and seeing someone with a t-shirt or even talking at the booth. And, you know, it's hard to have those casual conversations, you know, uh, and, you know, and you know that those casual conversations are sometimes, you know, kind of the springboard to larger conversations. So, I mean, I miss that part um, of events. We still get it sometimes. Like sometimes if I go into a chat, like a general chat, Someone will recognize me, and then we'll have a you know a nice little virtual love fest where everyone recognizes each other. Um, so I, I do enjoy those moments. So I mean, part of it is just engage. Um, if it looks like there's not a lot going on, feel free to bump the chat. There are probably people hanging out there in the background. Yeah. Um, I, you know, That's like we try to point. encourage folks on the Red Hat side, like if they see someone enter the room, to say, "Hey, how are you?" We see that you've come in. Um, but sometimes, you know. 
folks aren't always super vigilant about that. So I would say if you know you really have a question or something that you want addressed, go ahead and bump it. There's likely someone um, lurking in the background. They may have just been tired of doing 20 million greetings. Uh, you need to be the one person they don't greet. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. I think it's um between the Slack, um, uh, the OpenShift TV, the the chat rooms with the sessions, the chat rooms without the you know outside and the booths, and that there's a ton of places to to go back and forth between. And I think I'll have three laptops set up. I don't know how many you guys are each going to have, but I know Chris has multiples here. But I'm going to have one one for Commons, one for KubeCon, uh, with a different email address because you have to have different um you can't have two intrato sessions mm -hmm. open at the same time is what i've i've been told now so just so you know um because i i, I would guess it's because intrato is using the video um that it would just we couldn't and so anyways that's an interesting but i think the other aspect that i really like about this is um and i'm going to use a word i was teasing somebody yesterday on, about this um and this is where the bingo cards came up was it's sort of the democratization of access to this content because yeah. um, where commons we used to get between five and seven hundred people to an OpenShift commons gathering that was side by side with KubeCon or Red Hat Summit. We have five just under five thousand people who have registered for the commons event now. And and I think the same the similar exponential growth in registrations for KubeCon. I don't know, Jen, if you know how many people have registered, they kind of never tell us that. Really. Yeah, and I, I haven't heard yet. They're pretty keep they keep that pretty close to the vast. I mean, yeah. you know, for the for EU, I know that they had uh, I guess or around the twenty thousand mark, I think. Yeah. I'm guesstimating yeah. around there. And, and in person, I think in uh, San Diego really a year ago. Yeah, it was. I think it was it was like in a, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So um so it's slightly higher. I mean the KubeCon does charge for their registration. So like yeah. You can't really benchmark it like against Summit earlier this year where we had a crazy number of registrations, partly because Summit was free and also it was one of the very first virtual right. large scale events. And uh, the trend that we've been seeing is that, you know, there's kind of a drop off. I think there's a lot of virtual fatigue, like that's very real. So people aren't going to every single event that they can possibly get to. I think the people who are really interested in the topics are going, which I think is good news. I think you want to have people who are really interested and engaged with your content to be the ones going and not necessarily the drive-bys that, you know, oh. you know, log off after 10 minutes or whatever. Mm. Yeah, it's, but it's also a really good opportunity for things like um, uh, people who are very new to Kubernetes. And so I think there's some, there's a quite a few things on the menu and the agenda for KubeCon for, um, for new folks getting, just getting involved. Is there a, uh, a SIG contributor series of sessions, Josh, you know, onboarding? Is there a, this time around? No, no, not so much. Um, so yeah. we've been we've been working on making the new contributor workshop into a self service online resource. Ah. Um, <clears throat> but between the various things that have happened in 2020, <laughs> um, everybody, you know, and there's like 30 people working on that, but everybody contributing to it is running behind. So yeah. we're hoping to have something online by the end of the year, but we'll see. Is that like um, a Catacoda class or something of that nature? No, um, a combination of videos and text content. Uh, uh, not not anything particularly complicated. Mm -hmm. um, the um, so because it's not it's not about using Kubernetes; it's about contributing to Kubernetes and getting involved in the community, which Catacoda is not really set up for. Um, right. The um, and although one part of it, the technical part of it, the local build and test, is being put together by the folks in New Zealand. Um, so Hippie Hacker and his crew is putting it together based on this interactivity platform that they developed for hacking on Kubernetes. Um, and so that one we will actually have some also scheduled one-on-ones being offered um, once we get it up and running because that way you can actually go through it with a mentor and share screens even intercontinentally. Um, the um, and this is actually something we talked about for a while, even before COVID had shut everything down. Because yeah. due to the amount of schedule conflicts, the people who really wanted to, who we really wanted to attend the new contributor workshop, weren't necessarily the people who were showing up because it was competing with thirty other yeah. events. Um, 
And um, and so we were talking about moving it online even before we had to move it online. But yeah, we were um, talking about it in San Diego, yeah. how we could make this better. Um, the one bit, the one bit that we do have for a different kind of of new involved thing is so there's also a SIG contributor strategy for the CNCF, mm -hmm. which I'm part of, and we are doing a public session for people who have projects that are new to the CNCF. So there's this whole CNCF maturity process where you get in as a sandbox project, become an incubating project, you become a graduated project. And there's these thresholds of things you need to have for your project to reach each of those levels. And so we are doing a sort of micro workshop to help project leaders, whether they are looking, they have a cloud native project, they're looking to get it into sandbox in the CNCF, or they have one that's say in the incubating and they're looking to get to the graduated level. I mean, it's one of the big things that we do as a SIG, and so we'll be doing it with a live Q&A um, during the conference. So if anybody listening actually is a project leader or organizer, community manager, pro you know, product manager at a company that has cloud native products, and you're interested in that, please dial in for that. Um, we'll have about 10 minutes of presentation and the rest will be your questions. That, that'll be awesome. Yeah, I think that, that I, this, I've got this idea in my head, though, is that there ought to be a way to set up a Catacoda lesson that makes walks you through doing your first pull request on a piece of documentation on a project. And I'm sure uh, GitHub or Git, Git, GitLab or one of the, Git, the companies so, yeah. have something like that. Too. Part, that of the, part of the contributor workshop is doing, we have like a sandbox for you know, like testing your first PR, and yeah, that is part of the contributor workshop. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't run on Catacoda. Um, no, it's just, no. It just runs on GitHub, basically. The, yeah. um, and, and it's a, it's a mock uh, repository um, in mm -hmm. Kubernetes SIGs, but it has all the bots enabled, which is one of the things that you're learning there, right? <clears throat> and so every time, we've had people holding these at meetups, where they hold, you know, their own mini new contributor workshop at meetups, and so they create a folder there with its own approvers and owners and stuff, and people can learn how that part of the process goes. There's obviously a lot more to it, but getting the mechanics out of the way means that you're not trying to figure that out at the same time that you're trying to get somebody to review your PR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, I think that's, that's actually, that's, I wish, I would hope that there had been um, more, of, more of a Kubernetes 101 um, talk or something I, I didn't find one like that like the very very basics for very very new people did anything like that get in the door through the cfp i know you were on the committees yeah um, well that wouldn't have been the track i was on even even if i had and um i couldn't the, find uh, one i just ran through sketch while we were talking i apologize for the dog in the background i could not find one either yeah that that's a it, yeah okay, it has well, not been a goal of the um it has not been a goal of the the conference chairs to have that kind of content. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it should be, maybe there should be, but that would honestly require the creation of an explicit beginner, you know, newbie, whatever yeah. track. Because I, I will, yeah, I, I will just say just from having been to um, almost every single KubeCon that the demand for Kubernetes 101 content um, has increased massively. And that was actually one of the biggest pieces of feedback that I got from attendees that came by um, was that a desire, a really strong desire for a Kubernetes 101. And so I don't know if there needs to be recognition that there's a shift in some of the attendee demographics, um, especially as interest in Kubernetes continues to rise. Um, I don't know, I'm just gonna put my two cents in there. Yeah. But I think it's something that maybe we need to consider somewhere. Yeah, and I, I think actually this may be Partly, this may be significantly changed by the move to online. Because, I mean, let's face it, when it was in person, you had to buy a very expensive ticket pretty far in advance to get in. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the number of people who got in who were cloud native curious was not huge. Um, and I'm not sure that anybody's really looked at shifting the content. So the answer is to actually give that feedback to the conference chairs and the CNCF and say, hey, and and I'll say, as somebody who's been a track lead for various tracks, um, we really need um, that would need to be a separate track. 
because if you're a track lead for the storage track, yeah, you're not going to balance a what is cloud native storage against what are the latest features on Open EBS. Um, it's it's yeah, really hard to evaluate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, there's a I think that it's also a, and I we you can go to tryopenshift.com or learnopenshift.com. There's a lot of vendor stuff, and I mentioned at the beginning I'm. Yeah, on I think it's Thursday. It's uh, at noon or one uh, um, one Montreal time. Like, th there's so many courses out there already. I'm going to be part of a master class on cloud computing, and we were rehearsing last night. But the very basics of what is cloud computing, right? And yeah. People, that track that track is definitely necessary somewhere along the line. Uh, you know, and um. And I did see, I have to say, in San Diego, which is where I, I, the joke I was going to make earlier today is that we first we did um, gatherings in person on, on dry land. Then we went to the ocean, and um, we were on a boat in San Diego for the OpenShift Commons. I think that was mm -hmm. us getting transitioning to this virtual reality that we're going to have to do next. We're going to be virtual, and next it's all going to be with my Oculus Rift, um, and we'll have a virtual reality uh, OpenShift Commons gathering at some point um everybody get your your vr gear set up for that is there any uh, good vr gear that doesn't require me to log into facebook <laughs> we could have a long conversation about never that. mind but, <laughs> sorry but, but i think that you know the vendors do a lot of good um, intro level stuff, but it would be great to, now that we have virtual because we have always talked about separating out to like contributor summits and when and if you look at day zero, there's you know, and, uh, or other things like they have promcom and all of these things. But just it would we'd be going to get a lot of newbies, I think, um, especially with the democratization and the openness and the lower cost um, there. And and that's you know I think that's definitely. On the radar should be on the radar for the next go round. So I wanted to. Um, we have like ten minutes left to talk mm -hmm. a little bit about um, staying healthy and sane for a week of virtual stuff and what your tips and tricks are. And um, I'm going to show one more piece of swag. Um, and I don't even know if this company still exists. I, I'm sorry if they do. Um, Soylent. Yeah. Oh yeah, they still exist. They still exist. They're around it. That was my swag from I don't know which KubeCon, probably San Diego. But stay hydrated, um, drink a lot of water, and uh, the other tip that I always have is on my iPhone watch. It reminds me to stand up every once in a while and stretch because those are the two things when you've got multiple screens going on and um, you're going crazy. For me, if I don't remind myself that I even have the breathe app, which I think is hilarious on my iPhone. It tells you when to breathe. Like, yeah, if I haven't been breathing for the past 20 minutes, then we're in trouble. But um, yeah, it's definitely a good one. So uh, Jen, what are some of your tips for survival? Um, for well, I, I, virtual booth duty? De well, definitely stay hydrated and definitely walk around a little bit too. You know, I mean, um, it's you know it, it's funny because the time can go by pretty quickly and I you know I'm still guilty of this because I feel like my virtual meetings I mean I've always worked for a minute but the virtual meetings have way, gone way up but definitely walk around um, take the time to interact with people around you like go ahead and you know, interact with your pets and your family you know make some time there um, I think you know that's a kind of a sanity check because one of the things of course that's missing from events is like actual interaction with live creatures. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I would definitely, you know, incorporate that into your day somewhere. Um, and then, you know, I would also eat. And we yeah. can all, we could all uh, compare notes on the best virtual conference food that we have on Twitter again. We'll, we'll all take snapshots of our food that we're eating and and that's probably the best conference food that we will have eaten in quite a while. You know, it won't be a weird, you know, sandwich in wax paper with, you know, mystery yeah. ingredients. Uh, yeah. So in the ubiquitous apple or banana. Uh, yeah. 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 You can have you, you can you can get like, you know, I don't know, taro chips or something like that. Something cool it's and funky. Up our games. Yeah, I think that. Would yeah. Be up, up the food game. Yeah. Up that's what I think. Yes, you could do that. That would be good. How about you, Josh? What's your um, tip for staying sane uh, next week? Well, aside from the get up and move around, one of the things I actually have is I have an exercise bike with a laptop stand attached to it. 
Very nice. So that actually allows me to get some activity while still continuing to watch sessions. Um, the um, and um, and do take breaks, schedule breaks in there. I mean, one of the things that you end up getting tempted to do and cancel some of your regular meetings. Yeah. Like yeah. if yeah. your coworkers haven't done it already, the idea that you're going to watch and participate in all these sessions and then somehow pack your regular meetings and other work in between. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's just not going to work out well for you. Like, like you might do it for one day, one and a half days, and then after that, you're going to bomb out. Yep. Um, and you'll end up missing some of the sessions you were the most looking forward to. Oh, yeah. So, um, and and the other advantage of it being an online conference is, hey, if there's time slots that there's just nothing interesting in, skip those time slots. You use them as as time off. Mm hmm And I was I always remind people. Um, after the fact, if you miss something or like if someone looked at my schedule right now, um, a lot of the sessions um, are in comp competition with each other. Like there's mm -hmm. three in, in one hour. I, mean, I don't yeah, I know you run that. I'm not going to rank on anybody, but it's like nobody knows what particularly my interests are this. But oh, you know, I'm not involved in scheduling. Scheduling is just <laughs> a nightmare. Right? So just know that, you know, go to the one that's interesting and know. And if, if you have three friends presenting it all at the same time, make sure that they know that you're going to watch it in the on the YouTube and um, like with all the common stuff, it's going to be on RH OpenShift YouTube and the CNCF channel. Um, you can always watch it later. And CNCF is really good about getting stuff up within the next day or two afterwards. And, and I really am encouraging people to Netflix, Netflix binge watch um, the commons content. Um, yeah. do that. Do that yeah. thing where you get the di digital nudge. It just goes to the next one and goes to the next one in, net in Netflix. And I know that sounds boring to other people outside of this world, but it's really, um, I've been really uh, watching a lot of other people create pay playlists and watching mm -hmm. them. And it's, you have it on the back. I have another screen I'm looking at over there. And it's just playing in the background. And you're like, oh, and it's subliminal. It gets in. Somehow it seeps in, and I now know everything about key lime that I never ever thought I would. You know, <laughs> and it's like little things, and I, even though I do all the commons briefings, it's not anything there. So, Chris, what's your what's your super secret technique for? So, like, I do a lot of live streaming, right, right, right. So, like, that's my day job now. So, I have a lot of handy dandy snacks that I keep on hand uh, that are like literally right there so I can grab them very quickly and not have to go very far. Uh, they're high protein snacks, you know, very nutritious, low fat kind of thing. So like it's it's not something that I'm going to like reach for and just constantly eat, right? Like don't get your favorite snack to keep on hand, right? Like keep a snack that will sustain you, if that makes sense. And water, obviously hydrating, walking around. I'm very fortunate in the sense of what is that? Oh, box wine. of red <laughs> box wine. wine. If you want to know how I'm going to survive next week, it is the uh, uh, Apoxis, whatever it's. I think it's um, a British Columbia. Is that where it's? Oh, no, it's California. So you guys can get it okay. down there in the okay, States. Cool. But yeah, mm -hmm. a box of red wine is always handy to have. It's red, red hat. So it's all in there. So yeah, that's definitely, um, that'll be empty by the end of next week. Uh, but, <laughs> There's a lot of impromptu <laughs> toast going on, right, Diane? You'll be toasting right. a lot of yes. successes. Congratulations. And... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Woo, cheers. Uh, no, but definitely stay hydrated and, and do all the, all the stretching and, and exercise things. And, and mm -hmm. there are some really nice little happy hour things, um, Q&As in the evenings. Um, Priyanka yeah. Sharma's hosting a number of them. So um, I definitely think there, there's lots of things um, you can do to, to stay sane. Um, uh, and not be overwhelmed and, uh, you know, and I, I do think I'm going to have to host the bingo game. I think I might be um, printing, figuring out how to print all of those, put up the PDF somewhere in commons for people to download um, their own and print off their own cards and we can see who plays bingo there. And uh, all I got to do is um, add the- Give them out the gathering. Yeah, hand them yeah. out during the gathering or something. And I think that would be, but there's also this, the buzzword one too, uh, you know, Besides oh, the gosh. names of the projects, because I think some of them like key lime or um, well, porters. Porters in there. There's like there's there's so many sandbox ones. It's like trying to find, and those are the ones for me that's really key. Like uh, Argo, I know. You know T Thanos, I know. All of these things, you know, I know generally what they are. Like you were saying, Chris, we're like 
we know just enough to know where to point somebody to go to find resources so we don't look like an idiot um, too often. Um, but that's, it's really, I think, one of the, th the key things is just to stay healthy and stay safe. And um, I'm going to throw up the, uh, the red hat. Throw up. No, I'm not going to throw up. No, I'm not going to throw up. I'm going to throw up the red hat screen. So if you're, you're up for it, um, you can scan this in and, um, and get to, you know, the guided list of everything red hat. But I would say um, really think about, um, you yeah, know, there's lots of other stuff. Use Sketch. Um, I use it because otherwise I forget to go to things. Um, and um, yeah, it's going to be going to be an interesting thing. The Commons is going to be lots of fun. Um, I, I'm so looking forward to having Chris having you um, do the uh, do the, the science mystery theater version of it. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and hopefully I will get to get it together to supply you all the URLs and links for everything um, so that you have them handy for that. And then um, the, for me, the OKD working group again um, on Friday. This is just before the office hours that um, it, we, we scheduled it so you could go to the open source OKD working group and then the OpenShift 4.6 office hours that, um, that, that uh, Josh was talking about will happen right afterwards. So you can go from being an OKD fan. Um, I just found out um, yesterday CERN is, is upgrading theirs to 4.6 as soon as we get OKD out nice. the door for 4.6. We have a couple little cool. bugs. So yeah, I was really, that made my day yesterday. I'll have to get them to come and do a, a talk at the OKD working group. But I think that's, um, you know, that's kind of um, what I was uh, thinking would be the great thing is today to just kind of do this. And, you know, I'm going to stop sharing again for a second, but um, one of the things I think is that I miss is seeing everybody's faces. So yeah. I'm like incredibly grateful for you guys coming here today, hanging out with us and for everyone who's been hanging out in the chat and watching online. Um, I'll put this up on uh, our YouTube channel, uh, uh, but I do encourage you really make the most of KubeCon. Look for us in Slack, on Twitter, in the Red Hat booth, try out for some of the Red Hat raffles and other things like that. But um, I think we should have a recap one of these after KubeCon, um, like Ooh, a week yeah. after. Um, so I, I'm going to challenge you. The best online swag um, and find the person, the new person that you met. Um, what, what new person did you meet that really um, you thought was a great connection um, at KubeCon? So challenge everybody who's out there. And so maybe in two weeks' time, we'll have another one of these sessions and uh, recap um, where, where, what happened and um, do all that. And I would be remiss to say um, if I, I can't, I have to say that um, I really wanted to give um, my condolences to, to Dan Cohen's family. He did a huge, huge, huge thing lifting up all of the cloud native projects and building out this um, wonderful community. And he's going to be the thing that I miss the most at um, this thing is connecting with Dan. So somewhere up there, he'll be watching us. Hopefully, maybe he's singing some John Prine songs and not really hmm. um, caring too much about what us, but knowing him, he probably um, would be looking down on us. So um, thank you, Dan, for everything you did and um, putting up with all the headaches we ca caused you, but um, and doing it yes. so graciously. So cool. cool. Plus one. There you go. Well, it's 10.01, at least in my time zone. <laughs> and I still have some work to do to get ready for the commons. Um, and I'm sure everybody else here has stuff to do. So thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week at commons and KubeCon and OKD working groups and office hours and on OpenShift TV. So um, take care all and thank you for joining. Yep. Bye everybody. Bye thank all. you. Thank you, Diane. Bye-bye. Yeah,